Hey, everybody, it is my great honor to be with you all this week in our most awesome student ministry. If you don't know who I am, my name is Craig Rochelle, and I am the pastor of our church. And I want to just tell you all who are part of Switch, I love you all with all my heart. I cannot describe how blessed I am by our amazing student ministry. Uh, this is something that quite honestly has impacted my family significantly. My oldest two daughters, Katie and Mandy, will tell you that Switch totally changed their lives. They're grown now and they're still serving in Switch. My next three kids, there's a total of six, two plus three equals five, are actually in Switch right now. Um, Anna, Sam, and Steven love it completely and enjoy. She can't wait till she's old enough to be a part of what's going on here. I also want to welcome our network churches and say we're so glad to have you with us and other churches tuning in. Let me just warn you because we're about to kind of get serious a little bit. We may have some fun, but we're going to be serious as well. The title of this talk is The Talk. Or the Talk. <laughs> Hashtag The Talk. And what I want to do, quite honestly, is I want to kind of talk to you about the birds and the bees. This is kind of crazy. They got this for me. I didn't know this, but this actually is a bird lamp. There's not a bee lamp, but that's pretty cool. I've never seen a bird lamp in my whole life. But I want to talk to you about the birds and the bees. Now, I don't know. I'm just going to ask this. All of our churches, kind of be honest. How many of you have had your parents try to give you some sort of a talk about the birds and the bees? Any of you would say you kind of had one? How many say no and I'm glad I haven't had one? <laughs> right? Yeah. If you've ever had that, chances are it's a little bit awkward. You know what I'm talking about? A little bit awkward. I just want you to know that as a parent... It's awkward for us too. I don't know if you ever thought about that or not. But before I get into the talk, I'll tell you, I remember the moment my dad had the talk with me. I was about, I don't know, 13 years old, and I was in the passenger seat of the car. We didn't wear seat belts back then, we didn't have to. Our seat belt was our dad, okay? <laughs> if we stopped, he'd go, boom! You know, and that's how, that was the seat belt, you know, and that, that's the way it was. And so I was in the front seat of the car, and my dad, it was, he was like nervous and stuff. I go, what's going on? He's like, not creepy. And he said, son, I'm just curious. And I could almost tell, like, okay, here it comes. We're about to have the talk. And he said, I'm just curious, uh, son, do you know how, like, girls get pregnant? It's like, uh, I think so. He said, good, 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 good. And he said, son, do you know how you avoid getting them pregnant? I'm like, I think so. <laughs> he said, well, do you have any questions? Uh, nope. And he said, well, good. I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> and that, that was about the essence of our talk. Uh, what I want to do is I kind of want to have a little talk with you this week, and then we'll dive in a little deeper next week. And I want to start kind of with a normal story. Now, I just made this story up, but this story could be any story. You ready for a story? How many like stories? All of our churches, give me, give it up. Give me a little bit of love if you like some stories. Okay, Here, here's how the story goes. Once upon a time, boy meets girl. Boy thinks girl is pretty. Girl thinks boy is cute. Boy think girl smells good. A girl doesn't really think boy smells good because boys <laughs> never smell good. Boy asks girl on a date. Girl says yes. Boy saves up his money, drops some cash on girl. Boy feels pressure to kiss girl because if boy doesn't kiss girls, boys will make fun of boy at school. <laughs> boy gets up the nerve. Boy kisses girl. Doesn't go great because it's her first kiss but they think they'll get better. Boy and girl get better. Boy and girl kiss a lot. Boy's hands get bored. Boy's hand goes exploring. Boy and girl do more than they thought. Boy and girl end up doing what married couples do. Girl gets jealous because another girl likes boy. Boy gets mad because girl gets jealous. Boy breaks up with girl. Girl is devastated. Girl go meets another boy and does it all over again. Boy meets another girl and does it all over again. And they do that multiple times until one day boy meets the girl and girl meets the boy. But they have so much baggage when they get married that boy and girl are sad because they brought more baggage into the marriage than they thought 
they would. Okay, kind of a made up story, but the reality is that kind of story happens all the time. And I believe with all my heart that our good God, who really cares about you and cares about you right now, and recognizes that the decisions that you make today actually impact your life tomorrow. That our God has something way, way better for you than what most people are settling for. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today, just a little key thought if you're taking notes. When you see what's going on in the world today, let's just be honest, a lot of you, if you look at your parents' marriage right now, unfortunately, there are some of you would say, I really hope to have something better than what my parents have. In fact, I remember growing up thinking, is it even worth getting married? I mean, I don't know anybody that really has a good marriage, and I had no idea that marriage is a gift from God and can be one of the greatest pleasures and gifts in your life if you do things God's way. When you look around today, you'll see a lot of marriages that are not working very well, and I believe that God wants you to have something different and something way better. So the key thought is this, if you want something you've never had, you need to do something you've never done. Another word of saying it is, if you want what other people don't have, you have to be willing to do what other people won't do. And I wanna to talk to you today and next week about being different and searching for something far better than what you often see. In fact, we'll look at Romans 12, uh, verse two, and let this set the tone for our study today and next week. This is what Paul said to the Romans. He said this, don't copy the what? Let's all say it aloud. He said, don't copy the behavior and the what? And the customs of the world, but let God do what? Let our God transform you, to change you into a new person by doing what? By changing the way you think. Some of us, we've been programmed to think just like everybody else in this world. And I believe over the next couple of weeks that God wants to somehow change the way that we think. Then you will know what God wants you to do. If you want what everyone else has, do what everyone else does. What, is most, what do most people have? A marriage that's kind of half-hearted, a marriage that often ends in divorce, a marriage that stays together just for the sake of the kids, a marriage that is far less than God intended. If you want what few people have, you'll have to do what few people are willing to do. Don't copy the customs and standards of this world, but let God change the way you think, and I believe he'll bless you beyond what you can imagine. So what I wanna do is I wanna inspire you to have a higher standard, to have a higher standard than what many people around you have and not settle for less than God's best. And so very simply today, I believe that God wants you to have a higher standard in three areas of your life. The first one, if you're taking notes, is this, is we will have a higher standard on who we will see. I will have a higher standard on who I'll see. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up in the sixth or seventh or eighth grade, we would kind of go with people. I don't even know what that was. We didn't go anywhere, but we'd like go with them. Like, will you go with me? And they'd say, yeah. What does that mean? I don't know, but we're going together, okay? And for me, kind of the standard was, you know, cute, funny, popular. Cute, funny, popular. For most people today, it's like, who do you want to go out with? Somebody cute, maybe somebody funny, and definitely somebody popular. The problem is that I believe God wants us to have a higher standard that before cute, funny, and popular, the first item on our agenda is someone who is a follower of Jesus. Now, quite honestly, we may not even start going out when we're younger because we're going to grow up a little more, and we may wait until we're older. But when we're of the appropriate age, the very first and highest quality that we look for beyond a shadow of a doubt is someone who is a follower of Jesus. Not someone who is a Christian in name. Like, you know, are you a Christian? Like, well, yeah, I go to church on Christmas and Easter. You know, it's not like I'm something else. Well, of course, I'm a Christian. We're all Christians, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about someone who is pursuing Christ. He is first in their lives, and that is the highest goal for them. In fact, I love what 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 through 16 says in the message translation. It says this, don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not a partnership, that's war. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go strolling with the devil? It's a really interesting question. Does Christ walk down the street with the devil? No way. And what Paul was saying is we would not be joined together, other versions say yoked together with unbelievers. In other words, if you are a follower of Jesus, you don't date, 
pursue, and certainly you do not marry someone who does not put Christ first. But you may say, you know, I'm kind of lonely, and I don't want to get left out of the dance, and I don't want people to think I'm not attractive, and so here's, you know, he's so cute, and he's got a cute butt, and he drives a nice car. Listen, ladies, when you get older and you have a baby, it doesn't matter how cute, how funny, how nice his car is, how fine his butt is. If your baby gets sick, the only thing he can do in his car is drive your baby to the, the doctor. His jokes won't get the baby better. The baby looks and goes, that's funny, but I'm still sick. Put your cute butt. How you like that, baby? Check that cute thing out. Okay? <laughs> that doesn't do your baby a bit of good. What you need is, ladies, a man of God, you can say amen anytime you want, who knows how to go before the throne room of God and believe for a miracle for your baby. We seek Christ first. Now, here's the big question. How do you know if this person that I'm sort of liking is really passionate about Jesus. I mean, I kind of feel this chemistry and this kind of looks fun. This is in the potential category. I can just feel it. How do I know if this person really, really is pursuing Jesus? I'll tell you right now, you will know within the first 30 minutes of a conversation, guaranteed, within the first 30 minutes, you will know. Why? Because we talk about what's most important to us, okay? Guys, if you meet someone and she's a cheerleader and she loves cheering, like, hey, how are you doing? I'm fine! I'm fine! You know, right? <laughs> Pop bombs, right? You know, if you meet a guy who's like, you know, he loves football, what, what do you enjoy doing? Well, <laughs> touchdown last weekend. You know, they're going to tell you the very first thing. You know, I'm into arts, I'm into music, I'm into dance. I'm, you know, I've got, I've got 743 Instagram followers. I'm a celebrity. You know, they're going to tell you what's most important to them. And you'll hear in their conversation early on, Oh, man, I got to tell you what happened at church last night. I mean, I was at Switch. Oh, it was so amazing. I mean, the Nick taught this message, and it really ministered to me. Oh, my gosh. You know, I was praying with another kid. And, you know, you're going you're gonna to hear it early on in the conversation because they always reveal what's most important to them early. Same is true on social media, okay? You go look at their Twitter feed. You go look at the pictures they post on Instagram. If you don't see any evidence in the last month of spiritual pursuit, this is what I read in the Bible. This is what God's, this is what I'm praying for. Here I am with my good friends at church. If you don't see any evidence in the last month, let that be a real indication to you. First and foremost is we have a higher standard on who we will see. In fact, when I met um, the girl who became my wife, Amy, here's how people described her. I met her on a blind date. I'd never seen her before, didn't know anything about her. But someone came up to me and said, Groeschel, you are so weird. You are so overboard for God. I mean, you are, you're like, you're God guy. You're like, God, ah, God, 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 God. He said, there's this girl you have to meet. She's weird like you. <laughs> and that's how I met Amy. They described her as overboard for God. They didn't say she was pretty, which she was. They didn't say she had a great personality, which she did. They said, this is how they knew her. She is overboard for God just like you. And that's how I met her. I have a higher standard on who I will see. If you want something different than what everyone else has, you have to be willing to do something different than everyone else does. And therefore, we will have a higher standard on who we'll see. Let's all say it together, Switch. I will have a higher standard on who I will see. Now, some of you, I'm not coming back next week unless you do better than that. All of our churches together, like you mean it, I will have a higher standard on who I'll see. The second thing is I'll have a higher standard on what I will do, on what I will do. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 says this, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. There are some of you, you used to not be a follower of Christ, but now you are. You're not in ignorance anymore. You know God wants something better. Verse 15 says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Now, this word holy can be intimidating, like, I'm not holy, and the reality is we're not holy in our own power. But Christ in us can lead us to live a holy life. And the word holy in the Greek language, it's the word hagios, it simply means to be set apart, or it means to be different. That's what it means. Be different than the world. Be set apart. Listen to me. If you look like, act like, talk like everyone else, then you are not following Christ. We have a higher standard on who we'll see and what we'll do in order to hook somebody. And so you decide ahead of time. Everybody else may do certain things, but I'm not going to do it. I don't know what that'll mean for you, but, you know, I'm not getting drunk, okay? 
I'm not going to party. And especially when it comes to what we do with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, we're going to decide ahead of time that as followers of Jesus, we don't have sex, okay? Scripture teaches us that this is a gift reserved for marriage. And so we decide ahead of time. You don't wait until you're playing truth or dare somewhere and you're making out like that. You, know, you decide ahead of time. This is something, I'm saving this for later. I, I'm waiting on this. And then not only do you decide that, but as Christians, we're not just looking for technical virginity, but God is calling us to purity. And that means that it's not just in what we do, but how we think, how we dress, what we talk about, how we behave. We're not gonna just be like, well, I didn't have sex, I didn't go all the way, you know, but I fool around a lot, you know. We're gonna, we're gonna protect the purity in our lives and even down to the point where we're gonna protect our hearts. In other words, I'm not gonna go tell everybody, oh, I love you, I love you. You're the only one for me. You're the seventh one I've said that to this semester, but I really mean it right now. <laughs> we're gonna protect our hearts. So not only are we gonna have a higher standard on who will see, we're also gonna have a higher standard on what we're going to do. And the third thing, if you're taking notes, is this. We're gonna have a higher standard on what we'll expect. I will have a higher standard on what I will expect. I love the words of Paul in Ephesians 3.20 when he said, now to him, now to Christ, who is able to do immeasurably what? Let's all say this. He can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory. I believe with all my heart that you are a special generation. I love the passion I see coming out of you. I love your, your heart for God. I love, I love that you are willing to be different and live by a higher standard. I believe that God wants to bless you in a future marriage with more than you can ask think or imagine. He has done that absolutely and completely with me. If you have ever seen my wife, you will know that I speak the truth in Jesus' name, okay? It, God wants to do exceedingly and abundantly more. That means you don't lower your standards, you raise your standards. That means you don't settle for somebody who's kind of a Christian, who's kind of, you raise your standards. You don't settle for a fixer-upper, so many people are like, well, I can fix him. I can make him better. I mean, enough time with me, he might start coming to church. I mean, he, he might start stop cussing all the time. I mean, when he's around me, he doesn't do that, but he's when he's around the guys. No, you don't settle for that, okay? How in the world can you trust God to save your soul, but you won't trust him to bring you the appropriate future spouse? We put our trust in God, and we wait for something higher, something better, something that he wants to give us. So... Some of you right now, you are dating the wrong person. According to God's standard, you're settling. I believe he has something better for you. And yeah, I know there's gonna be some people get mad because there's gonna be some breakups this week, and I don't care because God has something better. I went to get a Sprite one time in a, uh, in a Coke machine. I put my, my 50 cents in and pressed Sprite. Nothing came out, I was devastated. I was so thirsty, so I went for a Dr. Pepper. Nothing came out. I was so thirsty. I went for a Diet Coke, nothing came out. I, the only thing that was left was Diet Dr. Pepper. And I don't like diet drink, but I thought I might as well go for Diet Dr. Pepper. I pressed Diet Dr. Pepper, and guess what came out? Oh, not a Sprite, not a Diet Dr. Pepper, but a strawberry soda. Strawberry soda, you have no idea. What is a strawberry soda? It is a Sprite with some kick. It, it's, it's, it, it wasn't even on the list, but it was my favorite drink around. And I was so devastated because I wanted a Sprite, and I had no idea that I was drinking strawberry soda. Hashtag the talk, I'm telling you what, some of you right now, you're settling for a Sprite. And God's got for you a strawberry soda if you'll have some higher standards and you don't settle for that which is lower. What if you're settling and what if you're messing up and what if you're doing things wrong? The good news is we serve a God who makes all things new. And that, that may be exactly why you're here today because God has something better for you. Do not conform to the patterns and customs of this world, but be transformed and God will renew the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do. I will have higher standards on who I'll see 
on what I'll do and what I expect. Father, I pray today that you would minister to these amazing students, that you would build faith and life within them. And as you take a moment at all of our different churches and just reflect on this, if, if you would honestly respond, and don't, don't do it yet, but honestly respond, that you're willing to be different. Let me tell you right now, if you want higher standards, and if you want to serve God and not be like this world, you have to be different. And people will laugh at you, and they'll make fun of you, and sometimes they'll kind of like turn on you. But listen what, you can't please everybody, but you can please God. And at the end of your life, it's going to be much more important that you please God. And all of our churches, you say, you know what, even if I'm weird, even if they laugh, I don't care, because I really want to live by God's higher standards, and I'm going to pray that he helps me to do so. Would you lift up your hands right now, all of our churches? Just lift them up right now. Lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, and say, yes, that's me. God, I thank you at all of our different churches that there are students who really want to pursue you and really want to please you. And God, I thank you that years from now, we're going to look back and say, something happened that night when I was in your presence with other people, and you spoke to me and gave me a desire for something more and something better. And God, I thank you for your forgiveness of what I've done wrong. And God, I thank you that you're calling me to trust you, to not be like this world, but to be set apart, to be different for your glory. And God, we expect you to do exceedingly and abundantly more we can ask, think, or imagine, because God, you are that good, and we trust in you and trust in your ways. As you keep praying today, nobody looking around, there's some of you right now that you're very, very aware that you need something spiritually. And I'll tell you what, I was your age when I really first started to feel God drawing me toward himself. The big problem I had is I was kind of wrestling with, what do I do? Do I, do, do, I, do I try to keep fitting in? Do I try to keep being like everybody else? Or do I surrender to a God who wanted something more for me? In the back of my mind, I felt so guilty because I knew I'd done so many things wrong and the weight of the sin, just, it just seemed like I couldn't get it off of me. So I tried to be better. And the problem was I'd be better for a little while and then I'd get back to being bad. And I didn't recognize that I could never be good enough on my own for God. And this is the power of God's love, that God was good in our place. When he sent Jesus, who was without sin, to die for our sins, and when I recognized that the only way I'd be made right with God was not by my own performance, but instead by my faith in him, that's when I surrendered everything. And quite honestly, there are many of you, that's why you're here right now, and you can sense it. Because you've been settling for something less than what God wants you to have. And today, by faith, you're gonna step out of yourself and step into the presence of God and say, Jesus, I believe you're real and I believe you're ready to forgive me. And God, when you forgive me, I'm gonna give you my whole life. Jesus will be first in my life. He will be my savior. He'll come up in the first 30 seconds of my conversations and he will be present on my social media status. Why? Because he is real to me and he has transformed me. In all of our churches, there are those of you, you recognize your need for him. You recognize your need for forgiveness. And so today, by faith, you step out and say, yes, take my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. That's why you're here, and you know it. All of our churches, those of you who say, yes, that's me, Jesus, I give my life to you. Lift your hands high right now and say, yes, I surrender to you.